Hey everybody, it's Keegan here, and I know I haven't uploaded a video in almost two weeks, so I do apologize for the lack of videos for almost two weeks. Uh, the reason I haven't uploaded is because I've been busy with work, life, and stuff like that, and I kind of wanted a little break from YouTube, but now I'm back with a new video for you guys. But I'm sure you guys know that I can't upload, I won't upload videos all the time because I have a life outside of YouTube. But anyways, now I'm back with a new video for you guys. So anyways, today's video I'm bringing you guys a book, game, and Blu-ray update for Saturday, August 15th, 2020. And for this update, I got one book, three games, and six Blu-rays. So on Monday, I went to the West Edmonton Mall with my brother and his two friends, and I went to three stores. First, I went to Game City, and I bought three games. And I went to Indigo and I bought one book and then I went to Game City and then I bought five Blu-rays. And the other Blu-ray I ordered on Amazon two weeks ago and it finally arrived in the mail on on Wednesday. So I don't really have much else to say so let's start the update and we're going to start with the book first. So without further ado, let's start the update. And the book doesn't say what year this was printed, but this book was first printed in 1991, and that book being American Psycho by Bret Easton Ellis, and this book was originally published in uh, 1991. So yeah, anyways, here's the front, spine, and the back. Brett Easton Ellis is a very good writer, and American Psycho is beautifully controlled, careful, important novel. The novelist's function is to keep a running tag on the progress of the culture, and he's done it brilliantly. A seminal book, says Faye Wilden of the Washington Post. A masterful satire, a ferocious, hilarious, ambitious, inspiring piece of writing which has large elements of Jane Austen's at her virtual best and important books as Catherine Dunn. A great novel, what an immersion set about genius, that is the return of one's rejected thoughts with alienated majesty. Holds true for American Psycho. There is a fever to the life of this book that is my in my reading, unknown in American literature. The first novel to come along in years that takes on, which the American literature one was said by Michael Tolkien. The, anyways, the first novel to come along in years that takes on deep and dystopian themes. Ellis is showing... Older authors where the hands have come on to the clock is Norman Mailer of the Vanity Fair. And there are a total of 399 pages. And I haven't read this book yet, but I know this is supposed to be a really great book. And I have seen the movie adaptation of American Psycho, and that's a really great movie, and I own it on Blu-ray. So I'll probably give this book a read sometime. And then maybe do a review on my book review series that will be coming out eventually. So anyways, that's American Psycho. And now on to the games. And the first game we have here is a game that I've been wanting to play for a long time, but now I finally have it. And that is the 2005 game of Killer7. And this is the Nintendo GameCube version. And this game was developed, I mean, published by Capcom. And it was co-developed by Capcom, but I can't remember the name of the other company that developed it. So, yeah. Anyways, here's the front. Spine. And the back. Step into the mind of, the, of an assassin. Killer7 is a hard-hitting, surreal action-adventure game starring Harmon Smith. A mysterious assassin who can harness the unique powers of his seven pro personalities. Working together, these personalities are the Killer Seven. Their mission: stop the evil Kunlan and his minions, known as the Heaven Smile, from taking over the world. Play any of the seven personalities at any time, anywhere. Characters equipped with their own customized weapons. 
unique abilities, invisibility, super speed, blood spray, resurrection, and more. And this game is rated M for blood and gore, intense violence, sexual themes, and strong language. And this is one of the few GameCube games that's on two discs. So here's disc one and disc two. And it comes with the instruction booklet, but I'm not going to go through it. And I've been wanting to play this game for a long time, and I finally tried it out. And so far, it's a really, really great game. I highly recommend it if you never played it. It's a pretty bloody game. And I know that this game is also available on the PS2, and the remastered version is available on the PC. And I know that this game was originally going to be one of the few GameCube exclusives that were that was going to be released by Capcom. I won't say the names of the other games, but I'll probably talk a little bit about that in my review for this game, which will come out eventually. But overall, really, really great game. So anyways, that's Killer7. And the next game we have here is the 2004 game of Hot Shots Golf 4 for the PlayStation 2. And this game originally came out in 2003, but for some reason on the back it says it was it was released in 2004. But yeah, and this was an online bra broadband only game. I doubt the servers are even up anymore. But yeah, anyways, here's the front, spine, and the back. For your favorite golf game is back. Realistic physics, humorous golf antics, the perfect formula. More characters, courses, features, more than ever before. The unforgettable miniature golf returns. Play online and outperform players across the nation. And this game is rated E for mild language, suggested themes, and comic mischief. Oh shoot, the disc is not in the case because it's in the PS2. I was playing it earlier. Uh, whatever. I forgot that the disc was in the PlayStation. Eh, never mind. But anyways, I have played this game before back in 2007. I haven't played it since until when I finally bought this game. And this is a really, really fun game. Um... I remember when I played it when I was younger, I sucked at it, but now that I'm playing it now, I'm getting better at it. It's a really, really fun game. You don't have to like golf to like the game. It's a really, really fun game. I recommend it. So anyways, that's Hot Shots Golf 4. And the last game is a very controversial game. It's one of the most violent games ever made, and I'm sure a lot of you might have heard of it. If not, here's the game. And that game we have here is the 2003 game of Manhunt. And this game was developed by Rockstar North and published by Rockstar. So, yeah. Anyways, here's the front. Spine. And the back. They killed Cash, now they want to kill him again. You wake him with the sound of your own panicked breath. You must run, hide, fight to survive. If you can stay alive long enough, you may find out who did this to you. This is a brutal blood sport. America is full of run-down, broken, rust-belt towns where nobody cares and anything goes in Carcer City. Nothing matters anymore, and all that's left are cheap thrills. The ultimate rush is the power of Grant Life and you and take it away for sport. This time, James Earl Cash, you are the sport. They gave you your life back. Now they want. Now they're going to hunt you down. And this game is rated M for intense violence, strong language, and blood and gore. And here's the disc. And someone named Caldwell probably owned this game. And there's a CC on the instructions, which I'm not going to go through. And I've always wanted to play Manhunt, and I finally tried it out, and it's an awesome game, although it is a pretty violent game. This game is actually banned in several countries for its violence, and um, but overall, it's a really, really good game. I really enjoyed it. It's a really, really good Rockstar game. I know there's a sequel called Manhunt 2, which came out in 2007. I'll probably get that one someday when I complete the first Manhunt game. 
So anyways, it's Manhunt. And now onto the Blu-rays. And the first one is actually a TV season, well, TV seasons, and that is the 2018 Blu-ray release of South Park Seasons 1 through 5, and this includes 79 episodes from 5 complete seasons, and it has Kenny on the front. So, yeah, anyways, here's the front, spine, the other spine, and the back. Come on down to South Park with this epic box set. Special features includes commentary by the creators of South Park, Trey Parker and Matt Stone on 61 episodes, Chef, Chocolate Salty Meatballs music video, Cartman, Oh Holy Night music video, and more. And I'm going to take off the slip cover. And these episodes aired from 1997 to 2001. And this Blu-ray is released by Comedy Central, and it does have the Paramount logo on the back, but the Paramount logo is not shown at all, only the Comedy Central logo. Anyways, this is rated 14A for crude content and mature themes, and the total running time is 1,780 minutes. So anyways, here's Disc 1 and Disc 2 for Season 1, which aired from 1997 to 1998. Here's Disc 1 and Disc 2 for Season 2, which aired from 1998 to 1999. Here's Disc 1 and Disc 2 for Season 3, which aired from 1999 to 2000, which the last episode was the only episode that aired in 2000. Here's Disc 1 and Disc 2 with Season 4, which aired in 2000. And here's Disc 1 and Disc 2 for Season 5, which aired in 2001. Here we go. And South Park's an awesome show. It's really, really funny. I plan to get the rest of the seasons on Blu-ray someday. I'll probably get seasons uh, 6 through 10 in this kind of box set someday. And also seasons 11 through 15 and 16 through 20. And I'll get the other seasons, like seasons 21 to 23 on separately eventually but other than that south park's an awesome show i'll definitely get the rest of this series someday so anyways it's south park seasons one through five and the next one is actually a digi book and actually my first digi book i ever bought and that is the 2008 blu-ray release of one flew over the cuckoo's nest this is a 1975 movie with jack nicholson and it was a winner of five Academy Awards, including Best Picture. So, yeah. Anyways, here's the front. Spine. And the back. And it also stars Louise Felcher and William Redfield. And this movie is uh, based on the novel by Ken Kelsley from the 60s. I've never read the book that it was based on, but I'll probably read it someday. And... Here's the paper thing that was on the back. Funny, shocking, powerful, a film of almost eternal um, elemental force, says Gene Shallot of Today slash NBC TV. Special features commentary by director Milos Foreman and producers Michael Douglas and Saul Zanitz. The making of One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, additional scenes and theatrical trailer. And those are all the special features. Rated 18A and the running time is 133 minutes. And I'm going to go through the digibook really quickly.
I'm almost done going through this uh, booklet. And there we go. We're done it. And finally, here's the disc. And I haven't watched this movie yet, and I also haven't read the book that this movie was based on, but I'll probably probably read the book to it someday. And I hear nothing but great things about this movie, so I'll give it a watch someday. So anyways, that's One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. Um, the next one we have here is a movie I've been wanting to watch for a while, and that is the 2018 Blu-ray release of Climax, also a 2018 movie. And this is the Special Collector's Edition. Four stars. A sensual loadout that will have your heart pounding, says the Time Out New York. And it's a film by Gase Bruneau, who also directed Enter the Void, which I have on Blu-ray. Which, speaking of Enter the Void, I actually recently checked out that movie about um, two or three weeks ago. Or maybe four weeks ago. It's been a while since I checked it out. But I checked it out recently. That's a really great movie. I'll probably check it out someday. So anyways, here's the front spine, the other spine, and the back. And if you take off the slip cover, and if you turn it over to the front, it has a different artwork. So yeah. And some of these names are a little hard for me to pronounce, but I'll try to pronounce them the best I can. So this movie stars Sophia Batila, Kitty Smile, Roman... Golarmiak. Um, how the hell do you pronounce this? Shahila Yetkoab, Claude, Gaji, Gajan, Manuel, Jisley Palmer, Taylor Castle, the uh, Charles Scott with Charlene Temple, Leah Valmos, Alia. Uh, uh, Asla Far, Kendall Muggler, Lakadar, Dre, uh, I don't know how to pronounce that one, Adrian Sisko, Madal Badly, Alusi, uh, you know what, I give up, you can pause and read out the cast, I give up, it's hard for me to pronounce them. And special features includes audio commentary with writer director Gase Bruneau, an antidote into the to the void, a brand new interview with Gase Bruneau, performing climax, newly product newly produced feature com comprising interviews with actors Kitty Smile, Roman Gullimark, and Shaula Yokob, Disco Infernal, The Sounds of Climax, Alan Jones, author of Saturday Night Fever, I mean, Saturday Night Forever, The Story of Disco, and Disco Mania offers up a track-by-track -track appreciation of the Climax soundtrack. Shaman of the Screen, the films of Gates were now a, a, new, a brand new video essay by writer Alexandra Herrer, Nicholas looking at Gates Renault's evolution as a filmmaker and trailer. And those are all the special features. And this is one of the only Blu-rays I own that's released by Raven Banner. The, own, the other one being The Autopsy of Jane Doe. And I believe that this movie was released by A24 in America. But it wasn't released. But I believe it is shown in the movie. But I don't know though. But I know it was released by A24 in the United States. Anyways, this is rated 18A and the running time is 95 minutes. And here's the disc. And I'm going to put the slip cover back on. And I've been wanting to watch this movie for a while, but now that I finally own it, I'll probably give it a watch sometime soon. And I'd like to check out some more of Gase Bruneau's other movies because I checked out Enter the Void recently and I really, really enjoyed it. So I'll definitely check out his other movies someday. So anyways, that's Climax. And the next Blu-ray we have here is the 2009 Blu-ray release of Friday the 13th Part 2. This is a 1981 movie, and it's obviously the second film in the series. And I do have the first Friday the 13th movie on a steelbook on Blu-ray that I got back in June. So yeah, anyways, here's the front. 
spine, and the back, two times the fear, two times the carnage, and two times the terror. And this movie stars Amy Steele, John Fury, and Adrian King. Special features include Inside Crystal Lake Memories, Friday Legacy, Friday's Legacy, Horror Conversation, Lost Tales from Camp Blood Part 2, Jason Forever, and Theatrical Trailer. And those are all the special features. Rated R on the running time is 86 minutes. And here's the disc, and it's just in the boring gray disc. Um, haven't watched it yet, but I'll probably watch it sometime soon. I actually haven't watched the first one yet. And I know that there is a Friday the 13th box set coming out by Screen Factory coming out in October. I think I might pre-order it and get it so I can get all the rest of the Friday the 13th movies. I'll probably go pre-order it soon. So anyways, it's Friday the 13th Part 2. And the next Blu-ray we have here is the 2012 Blu-ray release of Dark Shadows. Also a 2012 movie with Johnny Depp. And this movie is based on the TV series that aired from the, from 1966 and ended sometime in the 1970s. I haven't watched the show that this movie was based on, but maybe someday I'll check it out. Wickedly Funny says Mark S. Sound of CBS TV. And it's a Tim Burton film. Spine in the back. Visually stunning, hilarious, and lots of fun to Scott Mance of Access Hollywood. Wildly imaginative, says Sam Hollenbach of NBC TV. And this movie also stars Michelle Pfeiffer, Helena Bonham Carter, Eva Green, Jackie Earl Haley, Johnny Lee Miller, Chloe Grace Moretz, and Bella Heathcote. And special features includes maximum movie mode. See how this br this brilliant imaginative of Tim Burton and Johnny Depp created Dark Shadows with nine behind the scenes, the focus points, and deleted scenes. And those are all the special features. And this is a Warner Brothers Pictures movie co-produced with Village Roadshow Pictures, GK Films, Xanar Company, and Infinum and IHL. Anyways, this is rated 14A, and the total running time is 113 minutes. And here's the disc with the Blu-ray, and here's the disc with the DVD slash digital copy disc. And it does come with the digital copy disc, which this code already expired on October 2nd, 2014. So this code is pretty much useless. I don't think it'll work. And I have seen bits and pieces of this movie a couple years ago with my cousin because my cousin really liked this movie. I actually haven't finished it. But from what I remember, I thought this movie was actually pretty good. It's a really underrated Tim Burton movie. And I recommend checking it out if you haven't. It's pretty good. It's really underrated, in my opinion. So anyways, that's Dark Shadows. And the last Blu-ray is the one that I ordered off Amazon. And this is another movie I've been wanting to watch for a while, but now that I finally have it, I'll probably give it a watch sometime soon. And that is the 2012 Blu-ray release of The Piano, which is a 1993 movie with Holly Hunter, Harvey Keitel, and Sam Neill. And it has three Academy Awards, including Best Supporting Actress, which I believe it won the Academy Award for Best Supporting Actress. And it's a Jane Campion film. So anyways, here's the front, spine, and the back. Four stars is Roger Ebert of the Chicago Sun-Times. And this movie also stars Anna Paquin, Kerry Walker, and Jan Veen Lemon. No special features on this Blu-ray at all, but it does come with the DVD. And this is a Miramax movie. And this Blu-ray was released by Alliance in Canada. But in America, it was released by Lionsgate. So anyways, this is rated 18A, and the total running time is 2 hours. And here's the disc with the Blu-ray, and here's the disc with the DVD. And I've been wanting to watch this movie for a while because I hear nothing but great things about it. So I'll probably give it a watch sometime soon. So anyways, that's the piano. 
And that's going to be it for today's video. If you guys enjoyed this video, please leave a like. Please leave a comment below. And subscribe for more videos like this. And stay tuned for more videos, you guys. And as always, thanks again for watching. I hope you, I hope you guys have a great day. And until next time, this is Keegan Shepard signing off. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out.